Hi guys, uh, two travelers here in Mexico. This is part two of the questions and answers that we'll be doing. Mark is gonna take a break from filming because he just had my head in most of the video. So... Only the intro. Only the intro? Mm -hmm. nah, I think it's a little bit more than the intro, honey. Anyhow, so I will be holding the um, camera for a while so that I'm just not a talking head. So, hope you guys enjoy the questions and the answers to part two. And, um, you know, watch some of our other videos where we talk about different things. If you're trying to learn about Mexico and you might be moving here or, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I thought he was waving to somebody yeah. for a minute there. It's just being weird. Anyhow, um, so anyhow, watch some of our other videos. I think we've got how many now, honey? 40? This will be number 46. 46. So chugging along, chugging along slowly. If you guys have any comments, you know, you're always welcome to leave comments. You're always welcome to join our Facebook page also, same name, Facebook page, uh, where we post rentals and different things on there too. So um, subscribe if you guys haven't already and enjoy the second half of part two. Adios. So, um, I know Mark and I, we visited Ecuador twice, and in Ecuador, it's very prevalent mm -hmm. everywhere, and it's, it's heartbreaking to see. Um, luckily, we don't have that issue where we live here in Morelia. Mm -hmm. And if you live in another Mexican city, whether, you know, if you can give us an opinion on this, comment down below whether there are spray dog issues or not in that city, let us know. Okay, the next question is also from Gail. She says, I'm not good at price haggling. Uh, is this something that I'll have to deal with for every purchase? And what is a good strategy to learn? So, my personal opinion is in stores and Mikados, you're pretty much not going to be uh, haggling on the price. Some, like if they sell belts or maybe a shirt or something like that, yeah, you or shoes, you could probably haggle with them on that, but most of their prices are set. Most of the places that if you want to do that, and again, you don't have to. You can just go in with whatever price that they tell you, whether it's a gringo price, whether it's not. Uh, makes no difference, you know, whatever you, whatever you feel comfortable in doing. If you're good with the price that they offer, then that's a good situation. But the ones that you're going to find more of are the street vendors. Um, the ones that are out there selling their goods, you're going to have more of a, uh, a chance to do that. But it's something you don't have to learn, something you don't even have to do. Whatever works for you is what I'd say. And a strategy that sometimes works works is if you don't like the price just walk away and a lot of times they will follow you and, and offer you a lower price. Our next question comes to us from Darren who asked about cheddar cheese if you can buy it in Mexico. Yes you can you can buy it in Costco's, Walmart's and it will taste pretty much like what you're expecting it to taste like. However I should warn you that if you're buying cheese in markets uh, the cheese is actually made here and it typically it tastes much more salty than you're used to. So our next question was about our car. Did we bring our car into Mexico? Yes, we did. Um, we packed it full of stuff um, and we figured we would need some sort of transportation when we're here occasionally. Now, in order to bring it into Mexico, you have to pay for uh, what's called the tip when you cross the border. In our case, Temporary import permit. Temporary import permit. In our case, it ran us about $400 or a little bit more. We also had to have uh, Mexican insurance for what we did there, uh, which was what, $500 and something dollars a year? Oh no, it was less than that. It was like $350. Okay. Yeah. It was $350 a year for full coverage. 
in addition we needed to maintain our insurance in the united states so we got a plan for state farm that allows us to basically suspend our insurance in south dakota when we're not in when we're not in the united states and uh, the months when our insurance is suspended is twenty dollars a month and they'll let you do that uh, for like five months and then the six months you have to pay the full premium for that month but then you can put your car back on uh, suspension until either six months passes or you drive back into the United States. And our Mexican insurance we got before we left the United States. And our Mexican insurance we got before we left the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Pano, not the town, the bathroom. All right, another question comes from Jim in Florida. Uh, and he says, you always hear about Montezuma's Revenge. Have you had it yet? If so, is it, <laughs> is it a raging case of diarrhea or no worse than when you get the flu? Or no, sorry, no worse than when someone eats that Taco Bell. Okay. So, Mark can't answer this, but I can. Uh, yeah, I came to Acapulco, oh gosh, when I was in my mid-20s. So a long time ago. And um, I got Montezuma's Revenge very bad. I had a very, very high fever, like 105 and a half, 106. It was crazy high. Um, I called the house doctor at the hotel that we were staying in. And I actually had diarrhea really bad. And I was also throwing up. So I had the sink you know, sitting on the toilet, the bathtub, all right there for me. Um, I was told to take a really cool bath, like with cold water, which I did. And then a couple of days later, like two days later, I thought I was feeling better and went out to the beach area. And uh, I ended up like passing out on the sand and actually going into convulsions. And some Mexicans came around me um, to help and they got me some water and held my head up and it was pretty scary actually because <clears throat> um, I actually lost control on the beach I mean, you know this is a lot of detail probably more than anybody needs to know but you asked Jim and you wanted to know so I lost control on the beach and um, they ended up giving me some water I lost my sight I couldn't see uh, either uh, my eyes were open but all I could see was darkness and it was pretty scary so they held my head up and gave me some water and then I started to come to again and then I went out to the beach to out to the water to wash my shorts off <laughs> so that's way too much information I know but there you go our next question also comes from James C in Tampa Florida and he asked can I get my bi-monthly colonics done in Mexico well, yes you can, James, speaking of your last subject. Oops, I'm sorry, that was a personal email, not supposed to be in video. So the next question is from Evelyn. What are things you definitely recommend bringing from the U.S. Uh, uh, as in difficult to find or more expensive in Mexico? <sighs> Boy, I would say really you could find just about whatever you need in Mexico. It's just a matter of knowing where to find it um like okay well one example that i'll give you hold on there's a car coming <laughs> one example that i can give you is that um i was looking for some envelopes some white regular mailing envelopes could not find them anywhere i mean like home depot walmart um anyhow i ended up finding it at a stationary store and you had to buy it one envelope at a time is how they sell them they don't sell them in a box it's just one envelope at a time so uh and another suggestion is is that if you like really nice sheets that you're used to in the u.s i would say go ahead and bring your sheets with you um the quality is not going to be the same here um, but we did find good quality sheets in uh costco uh, that's where we bought our sheets before. That's where they have them here also. Electronics is more expensive. You can find it here, but you're going to pay a little bit more. 
Now, if you're asking yourself whether I should bring my large bumblebee with me or not, I would say not. They can be easily found here, as you can see behind me. Okay, the next question comes from Darla. She wants to know, would we consider moving to Monaco? Uh, I would say no. There's a lot of hills to climb. Uh, there's a lot of stairs to climb. Uh, but the color of the buildings and the homes are so colorful, we love them. I get it wrong. Monaco is a beautiful place. Guanajuato is a beautiful place, it's yeah. just not for us, it's too hilly, you're either walking uphill or downhill. Yeah, that's from Finding Nemo. Our next question comes to us from Finding Nemo, and he asked if we have been to Spain. Well, yes, we have been to Spain. We were there about, I don't know, four or five years ago. Uh, we were in Malaga, we went to Madrid. Spain was beautiful. Uh, we, were also, we also visited Portugal when we were there too. Again, a lot of fantastic architecture there. Uh, a lot of nice buildings. More expensive than Mexico, for sure. But probably still less expensive than living in the US. For sure. Depending on the area. Our next question comes from Dan. And he asks, is real estate less expensive when you're looking at it here versus when you're looking online from another country? And I will say that it is less expensive if you're shopping in Mexico and if you're using a, a local person here. Okay, so our last question is from Lindsay and she wants to know, do all residents, Airbnb, hotels and etc. have cockroaches in them? Uh, we visited Potalco last October and the uh, Airbnb place we stayed at was infested. <laughs> okay, so I can only give you my experience Probably depends on what areas you're living. Maybe the hotter areas have more cockroaches. I'm not sure. Uh, when I lived in California, I lived next to one of those street trains and I got cockroaches in my garage. So there you go. Where we live now in Morelia, um, we see them like when we go out our, uh, our entrance door, which is downstairs like two flights. Uh, we see them there, dead. Um, you do see them on the street, usually dead, um, and we see them, I see them outside dead when I'm hanging my clothes. So we haven't seen any inside our apartment yet. I wouldn't say that we're infested though, we just sort of see them randomly. Let us know what you would like us to talk about in our next video by leaving a comment on our YouTube channel or a comment on our Facebook page. And also, if you have any other questions that you'd like us to answer, or at least try to answer, uh, leave those comments below too.